to take a closer look at the Copenhagen Climate Talks. We're joined by Robert Guest, Washington correspondent for The Economist magazine. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. What do you think is the best that these climate talks can achieve? Well, I think we're looking at the possibility of coming up with an agreement to agree. We're not going to have a proper agreement because uh, President Barack Obama, for example, is going there um, offering some numbers, but these numbers depend entirely on whether he can get the bill uh, through the Senate. And in the Senate, uh, sparsely populated, coal producing pr states are massively overrepresented. So this is an incredibly difficult job, and there's no way he's going to do it in the next couple of weeks. So we're talking about laying down principles here. Um, other than that, what are the biggest uh, obstacles to achieving a deal? Let's talk, for example, about China, another big emitter. What are they coming to the conference with? What are they going to put on the table? Well, they're putting on the table an agreement to reduce the uh, CO2, the carbon dioxide intensity um, of their economy by quite a lot, by uh, 40 to 45 percent by 2020. And there are some complaints that that's um, simply going to be provided by the policies that they've already got in place. But those policies are quite recent. It's only in the last couple of years, really, that China has come round to the view that climate change is something that's going to affect China. And these are pretty serious reductions. They, of course, don't have to deal with the, the problems of a democracy, but they do have to deal with um, the problems of, of, of public protest. And there's a lot of protests at the moment, about mostly about corruption, but also about uh, pollution in China at the moment. When, when you look at uh, what's going on at the, the conference, do you see any innovative plans on the table to battle climate change? I think that the most important thing they can get right uh, is coming up with the simplest and most cost-effective ways of, of abating climate change. And that means carbon taxes. If you tax something, you get less of it. Too much of what we see at the moment is much less efficient. Governments like giving subsidies. They like doing obscure and complicated schemes like, for example, the, the type of cap and trade scheme that we're seeing uh, proposed by the House in America at the moment. And those things, you get much less reduction of carbon for the same price. And if it's too expensive to abate carbon, it's much less likely to happen. Many developing countries would like to be compensated by richer nations for their efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Is this a practical idea? I think we're going to see it in some cases. You can certainly do uh, a lot of useful things. For example, really simple things like um, giving uh, cleaner s stoves to, to, to peasants so they don't have to uh, burn wood and put soot up, uh, soot up into the atmosphere. But the, a lot of the offsets we're seeing um, have the, the huge problem that if you're paying people not to pollute, you're giving them an incentive to start polluting so that you can pay them to stop doing it later. And we haven't really worked out a good way of, of making that more transparent, and it may be impossible to do so. All right, Robert Guest, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.